Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be looking at a 2011 Mazda CX-9 with a customer complaint of the uh, door locks or the power door locks are inoperative. Now, to clarify that a little bit, the power door locks are inoperative when you use the remote fob. This car has advanced keyless, uh, so it's a push button start car. Uh, also, when you walk up to the car and you push the little button on the door handle, the car will not unlock. You physically got to uh, take the key out of the fob, stick it in the lock and turn it. That's the only way you can get it going. And we also noticed that uh, when we did a, a, a code scan on the car, we got a U0140 from the remote keyless entry module. And as I stated earlier, the car is equipped with advanced keyless entry or push button start. The car does start, so if you put the fob inside the car, obviously the fob has been uh, programmed to the car, it wouldn't start. So with the fob inside the car, the car starts, um, but the uh, wireless remotes won't unlock the car. Now, the, the power door locks work on this car. If you're inside the car and you push the lock or unlock button from the uh, door panel, the buttons inside the car, it works just fine. It's just the remote feature that's not working. Now, <clears throat> we know we've got the code. Um, and what I want to start with here is I just want to take a quick look at um, kind of what we're dealing with here on the wireless end of things. So up here in the top right, you can see the uh, keyless receiver. This is mounted up uh, underneath the header. Uh, the head panel front of the car and this is where uh, if you're 20 feet away from the car you push the unlock button this is the guy that receives the radio message from the key fob and unlocks the car now that signal uh, from the keyless receiver goes over to the keyless module and then from there uh, the keyless module is in communication via a CAN bus to the BCM and the BCM or body control module in this case is what physically unlocks the car. The other thing we've got here is these door antennas. So when I walk up to the car with, with the fob in my pocket and I push the door panel, uh, the door button, the keyless module uses one of these antennas or turns them all on, pings the key, the key responds, the antenna picks up the code, brings it into the keyless module, and if it's a good code, then it Again, we'll send a command over to the BCM to unlock the car. So we know, don't have, we know we don't have a problem with the, the physical ability of the car to lock and unlock the door, but for some reason, um, somewhere in the system, something's gone wrong in that either the BCM's not getting uh, the message to unlock the car or something's wrong with these antennas and the keyless module isn't getting the unlock command. So what we're going to focus on here in our diagnostics is a couple of things. Uh, we're going to take a look at the um, driver's door antenna to see if it's working, the keyless receiver, obviously the fob. And then we want to check uh, that we've got good communication between the keyless control module and the BCM. Now the code, uh, the U code that we received earlier, um, it is, uh, the code indicates that there is a problem in communication between the uh, keyless module and the BCM. So here's how we're gonna kind of approach this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our information system and just start by looking up the codes and then see if we can get a handle on what the code means based on uh, what we see here in the trouble chart. So I'm just gonna play this little video here for you. So this is us looking up the code and trying to follow the chart through. All right, so we're going to start our diagnosis by going in and taking a look at the U0140 code. So that's a U0140 code. I'm going to take a look. And uh, I'm using direct hit here or identifix. Uh, looks like I've got some options here. Um, we're, we are having a trouble with the keyless entry system, so I'm going to click on that tab. Uh, brings me to uh, scan tool display code. I'm going to go down to my U code. So I've got there's my U0140. It's already highlighted. So that's a communication error to the BCM. So uh, without getting too deep into it at this point, um, I seem to have some kind of a communication problem. Not sure what it's about, but 
obviously the BCM is involved here. So I'm going to go over here to this multiplex communication network. It's basically the only link that I have available to me. And uh, it gives me some uh, possible causes, some troubleshooting hints, that kind of stuff. But I'm going to click on this link that says determining the malfunctioning part. And even though my uh, code isn't listed here, uh, it says verify that the CAN related module DTC and the failed module using the MDS. Look for a DTC display pattern and failed module display pattern in, in tandem uh, which match. I have no idea what that means. I don't have an MDS. Uh, we're using an AUTEL on this thing. Um, so I'm just going to. So a hyphen in the DTC output pattern indicates the DTC may be displayed depending on the malfunction detection condition. Uh, we don't have a subcode. Ours is just a U0140 uh, and we pulled that from the um, keyless module. So I'm just going to take a look at this uh, DTC table and this is kind of where it uh, gets me and, and how this works is you uh, go down, find the module that you pulled the code from. In this case uh, it's our keyless module. You follow that across. Uh, so I have a communication error to the BCM. So obviously here I've got some kind of a communication problem between the keyless module and the BCM. And then it takes me to this chart that says determining the malfunctioning part. Right. Brings me to another chart. I'm going to find my keyless module. Here we are, keyless module. If you take a look at my U0140, I follow that over. There's an X in this column. I'm going to follow this column down. And it takes me to reference page F. I'm going to click on that. So reference page F says possible cause, connector, terminal, uh, disconnection, poor contact damage, or information, uh, corrosion, so obviously a wiring repair, or a BCM malfunction. So that's not really uh, all that clear to me anyway. So here's my keyless control module. Uh, it is tied directly to the BCM. So what I gather from the codes is the, 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 the trouble tree is pointing me at this BCM without a whole lot of uh, troubleshooting other than checking some wiring and that kind of stuff. So for our diagnosis we're going to kind of focus in here on this keyless control module and the BCM and keeping in the back of our minds that we do have uh, an apparent uh, communication problem between the BCM and the keyless module. Now, uh, obviously we're pulling codes from the keyless module, which means we can obviously communicate with it. We can also communicate with the BCM. And we know the BCM is working because it's the guy that physically unlocks the doors and that kind of stuff. And we can go in with our scan tool and communicate with the BCM. So I'm not exactly sure where the problem is on this thing yet, but my my gut tells me I've got some kind of a problem with either the keyless control module or the BCM. So here's how we approach this. Um, we suspect we've got a communication problem between the keyless module and the BCM. Uh, we start out with the keyless module and the idea here is we're going to test uh, a couple of things with the keyless module. Number one, uh, is the FOB transmitting? Number two, is the keyless module uh, getting those transmissions? And if all that stuff's okay, then we're going to take a bit of a harder look at communication, the actual physical communication lines between the BCM and the keyless module. So what we're doing here is, uh, and I'll play this video for you here in a second. This is uh, a tool uh, manufacturer called the Diagnostic Box. And what it is, is it's a... Um, 
antenna and uh, key tester or a fob tester. And this thing uh, works off RF. So basically what we do is we hold the fob next to it. We push the buttons and if the fob is transmitting, uh, we'll get an indicator on our screen here that it's transmitting and how strong the transmission is and all that kind of stuff. Now, a lot of your TPMS tools uh, do the same thing because these things uh, broadcast on the same frequency that TPMS tools do. But I'm just going to start this video for you here. And you can see as I push the button there, uh, this thing, the fob is broadcasting. Uh, we've got a nice strong signal. So the fobs appear to be doing their job. The other thing here is we need to know whether um, the, the car is um, receiving the signal or not, and whether the car is challenging the key fob or not. So again, we're going to use the diagnostic box. It has some pretty slick tools in here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to push the button on the door handle, and you'll see a couple of things. Number one, I'll show you a close-up of the screen here uh, in a second. But the top bar is um, the uh, uh, car transmitting, and the bottom uh, bar is the key transmitting. So when the antenna gets turned on, which is what happens when I push the button, it should broadcast an RF uh, signal. That'll highlight the top bar. And then when the key responds, that'll highlight the bottom bar so we can see whether the car is asking and the fob is responding. Now, this all happens very quickly, so both of those bars will kind of progress at the same time. But the other thing that I want you to watch here is there's a little red LED on the key fob here. And watch what happens to the screen, and I'll show you a close-up of the screen here in a second, but watch what happens to the little LED when I push the door handle button. So if you noticed, when I pushed the door handle, not only did I get uh, solid bars on both graphs indicating that the car is uh, sending out the RF and the fob is responding, we also saw that the, um, the little ed red LED on the fob lit up indicating that the fob is broadcasting. Now, we, we played around with this a little bit and uh, anytime we took the key into the car and pushed the start button, the red LED on the fob lit up as well, which indicates that the fob is um, broadcasting. And the same thing happened when we pushed the unlock button on the fob. Uh, the, the fob is, is broadcasting the code, and we saw that from the, the tester. Now, <clears throat> we know the car is requesting, and we know the fob is broadcasting. We were looking for some kind of confirmation that the uh, Keto's control module was actually receiving those signals. Now, we suspect that it is. Uh, we know the door antenna is working, and that's the same antenna that collects the RF from the fob. So there's an assumption here that if I'm pushing the button, the keyless module is, is exciting the door antenna, and then the fob is broadcasting back. That circuit appears to be okay, and there's no codes that would indicate that it isn't. The keyless receiver is a little bit of a different deal, and uh, this keyless receiver, if you if you refer back to the diagram, is power ground, and then it has a signal wire. And this signal wire, we were kind of curious to see whether we could make some kind of a determination on the signal wire, whether the um, wireless receiver was actually sending a message down to the keyless control module. We have some indication of that on the door antenna, but we were looking for some physical proof of the keyless receiver. So I'm going to show you my scope screen here. And what we found on uh, this particular wire right here was it has a constant signal on it. But when we 
push the button on the fob, we could physically see the signal change. And uh, we know from that that the keyless control module is receiving a signal from the keyless receiver. So everything appears to be okay up to the keyless control module. And I'll show you what I mean here. So this is our scope screen. I'll play it. So this the signal here we had all the time. It never went away. But watch what happens when we push the button on the fob. So there we pushed it, pushed it again, and you can physically see the change in the signal. It goes from a solid signal to a somewhat of a coded message. That tells us that the wireless receiver in the head panel is sending the key information down to the keyless receiver or the wireless control module or whatever uh, that module is called. Therefore, everything up to that part, uh, the antennas, the fobs, all that kind of stuff, everything appears to be working. What's left is the communication circuit between the BCM and the keyless control module. Now, this is a two-wire twisted pair. In the service information, they call it a CAN bus. So we went in and hooked up our equipment, expecting to see a high-speed CAN signal. And when we went in and looked at it, um, this is what we had. Now, if you know anything about CAN, we know both of these uh, buses at rest should be sitting at about 2.5 volts, and that's definitely not the case here. Not only that, uh, CAN high should toggle high, CAN low should toggle down or, or go negative, and that's certainly not happening here as well. So this is a corrupt CAN signal on the circuit between the wireless control module and the BCM. Now, we simply went in and unplugged the BCM while we watched this circuit. And you can see here where we unplugged it. You can also see that the voltage has changed dramatically on this thing, and I'll blow this up so you get a better look at it. And now we have both CAN buses sitting at 2.5. CAN high goes up. CAN low goes down. Now the signal is obviously, uh, I don't want to say corrupt, but um, it's not square as, as you would expect. Being that this is a CAN bus though, by unplugging the um, body control module, I've taken termination away from the bus. So that's really all that is. So unplugging the BCM returns the CAN voltages on the CAN bus between the wireless control module and the BCM to a to a normal voltage pattern therefore we've got some really strong indications now that we've got a problem with the bcm so disconnecting the bcm returned the can bus to normal operation the wire control module appears to be doing its part a new bcm was ordered installed and the car uh, operated at that point the bcm uh, other than we had to go back in and learn the keys didn't require any programming or uh, anything like that so we know this thing's got a bad BCM. Um, wasn't all that hard to change, and uh, cost on it was around six hundred dollars. Fairly expensive, but uh, just for kicks, we took the old BCM apart. And when we got in and started to look at the circuit board, you can clearly see uh, kind of a, a burny type corrosion mark. We've got some corrosion here on the circuit board as well. So we felt pretty good. Uh, about replacing the BCM in this car and in all honesty putting the BCM in it um, fixed it right up we were able to return it to the customer and um, we did learn a lot about this car uh, we um, even though the trouble tree is fairly vague um, once we got into it a little bit we were able to figure out how the stuff worked and, and communicate and that kind of stuff and combined with the code and, and our testing we were able to track this down to a bad BCM Thanks for taking the time to listen to our uh, case study here. Until next time. If you like this video, please let us know by following us or liking us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you want access to more in-depth uh, training videos, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.